I survived 100 days in roguelike adventures and dungeons. If you haven't heard of this pack before, it's a giant pack that adds so many new items, monsters, and dungeons to the game. This is a huge 100 days adventure and my longest one to date. And I just want to say, everyone, I'm so happy to be back to making videos. Also, if you guys want to stay up to date with what I'm doing and be in the community, feel free to join the Discord community or follow my social media in the description. Anyways, without further ado, ado, grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy as I try to survive 100 days in roguelike adventures and dungeons. Whew, this is a hard one. Starting out on day one, I already spawned in with a few different items. These included some food, a preset starter house, cactus sword, leggings, boots, and a quest book. I read into the quest book a bit, and there were a bunch of dimensions in this mod pack. I even got a golden carrot just for reading through it. I also had an enigmatic amulet. This amulet gives you 15% bonus sprinting speed, so I equipped it. There was also a counter in the top left for my talents in this mod pack you have to gain talent points in different skills and this makes you stronger and also allows you to progress through using better items like for example you can't use iron armor off the start actually seeing the counter the whole time was a bit annoying so i removed it and afterwards i noticed that i had a health bar in the top left for mobs as well as right above the mobs which was very handy now i noticed after i made the video that keeping the health bar in the top left was not a good idea since i have my my day counter there but I'll remember that for next time. In the distance, I saw a reed bee, which was interesting, and a seal as well. I then found this wood, which I mined up, and it was called Cascading Arc Wood. I then spent a decent amount of time just reading through the quest book. There was so much to read about, and I learned a lot about the mod pack. There were new nether portal mechanics. I would have to find the portal underground and then find a monolith to get back. There's also added bleeding in the game, meaning if you take damage, you bleed afterwards. And and dodging. I don't really use that mechanic as much, but it's pretty useful. As you defeat the end game bosses, the game also becomes harder, and the amount of quests in this mod pack is insane. By the time I was done reading, it was nighttime, and I saw an enchanted mob, so I ran the other way, and I had to quickly get the basics done. I made my wooden tools, and in this mod pack, items get traits. Uh, funny enough, the wooden pickaxe I got was legendary, so it gave me bonus attack damage and attack speed. I mined up some stone, and and made a set of stone tools. After that, I got the title named The Apprentice. I got an inventory full of quest rewards, which was pretty crazy, and I then saw this that I can plant down. What is that? Look at that zombie. Oh my goodness. No way. Okay. I'm not going out until it's daytime, that's for sure. Anyways, I mined down and found a cave pretty soon. I had to be really careful because there were a lot of mobs that would be able to one-shot me. After shortly looking around, I found this boss room. Oh, it's a boss. I slowly took down Edlob the boss with uh, one damage at a time. And as I did this, my combat level increased a lot, making me deal more and more melee damage overall. Soon enough, I defeated him and I got these ancient gauntlets that had gravity, sweeping edge, and shockwave on them. Ancient items in this mod pack are the best items you can get, so it was a really good find, but they automatically went into my offhand when I tried to equip them, and I wasn't able to attack with them. So I think they were broken or I wasn't of a high enough level to use them. I also accidentally found out how to access my titles with the T key and chose the apprentice title that I had unlocked earlier. I also got this enchanted goat vest from the boss, but when I tried to equip it, it wouldn't let me because my endurance level was too low. I looted the chest as well, and I found an iron shovel, which I couldn't even use because my skill level and excavation wasn't high enough. I found these recall potions, which teleport you back to your spawn point, which uh, would actually be really useful. And I found these tattered totems, which when you right click them, you study and they give you talent points for magic. I mean, there was so much to loot. I also found this tablet of home, which teleports to your respawn point as well. Other than that, I looted what else I could and headed out for the outside in search of a place to build my home. I ran through a savanna biome, saw some kangaroos and found Found this abandoned structure. Here's a tower, some kind. This could be dangerous. There's a lot of wheat here, which is actually really helpful. I might just set up my base right here. I think that's the move. Now, how do I use this is my question. Ooh, basic house, ranch style, 
Hobbit style, desert style, snowy style, desert style too, subaquatic, modern style, camping style, basic ranch. I like Hobbit the most. Build. Whoa. Holy moly. Oh my goodness. That just happened. I just built that without having to do anything. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? This is crazy. Oh, is there a mine shaft down here too? This is crazy. Look at that. And there's some cobblestone in here already. Wow. In fact, let me grab a stack of that. That's pretty useful. How fast can I go up these stairs? Look at this. It's like an elevator. Wow, that's insane. This house was incredible. I already had a bed, chests, a mine shaft, and shelter. I cleared up my inventory, and with a second night here, I went to bed. Waking up to day three, I made a hoe, and I harvested the rest of the hay that was in the abandoned structure. Then I found a couple of chests, which I checked if they were trapped, and they weren't, but they just had some farm supplies and paper, which wasn't too bad. As I ran out, I found this building, which I'd seen before in a previous 100 Days adventure. There were iron pickaxes out front, which I collected, but still couldn't use, and I headed inside where I found a dwarf, and and some armor, which I also could not use, not even the golden armor. So um, that was a bit unfortunate. I found this buddy card pack in a chest, which is something you collect in this mod pack and can get a medal with a buff when you collect all of the cards. I ran out again and found a ruined portal as well as this tower with a waystone out front. I marked it and in the future, I'd be able to teleport between all of the waystones I'd find. I went inside the structure and I quickly mined out the bookshelves for books. I also ran into this employees only room, which had a chest that gave me some blinks scrolls and lore fragments, neither of which I knew what they did, but I do find out later. I finished collecting bookshelves, then teleported home with the tablet I had, and it unfortunately used it up. I was hoping I could permanently use it, but with that, I headed to sleep. Upon waking, I found out about this talent tree called the Knowledge of Death. This came from me using the tablet and had a bunch of magical properties that I could improve, like keeping experience on death, which unfortunately isn't very useful in my case, but it also had additional enchantments from magic books, for example, which could be useful. I increased the chance that a tablet doesn't get lost on use and made my way outside where I noticed skeletons looked different in this pack. I also saw a wild and hunter, which are very dangerous vampire-esque mobs. An enchanted wraith ended up burning right in front of me, so I defeated it in one hit, and it dropped a copper coin as well as a protection one book. I also checked the rewards I had gotten from completing quests, and I got a bunch of stuff, including randomite ore, which intrigued me. I mined it up, and it ended up giving me a piece of iron ore. I headed out looking to adventure further. I saw a mob called an era in the distance, which I made sure to avoid, and I soon found the ruined portal I had seen before. The chest there gave me some good items, more specifically the magma walker relic, which lets you walk on lava, and the ghost skin talisman, which literally makes projectiles fly through you at the cost of 50% decreased attack speed, which as you'll see later, this is the most powerful relic there is. Unfortunately, I couldn't use either of these yet, and I would need to level up my talent points before I could do anything with them. I found another waystone, which I marked, and uh, as I continued my adventures, I found that the desert looked much different, with new trees and stubs. I also ran into a mini cactus, which kind of scared me, and it caused me to bleed, so that was my first introduction to that mechanic. I collected some reeds as I was out in the wild, and I found out that you you can make a pan flute with them, which lets you sing songs. So I wanted to make one of those later. As I continued my exploration, I found a desert temple, which I carefully entered and making my way to the bottom, looted the chests inside. I found a bow with Sage's Blessing 4. This is an enchantment that I see a lot. It increases experience and gives exhaustion sometimes, which is a pretty vague description. I was never really sure what it meant. I found some more simple loot and also a scarab talisman, which gives you bonus movement speed in the desert and lets you mine faster. Again, I couldn't use this yet, but I would in the future. I also got some more buddy card packs that would let me work towards getting that medal that gives you speed one. With that, I headed out and collected some of these palm logs that were nearby, and the planks from it were pretty strange. I also saw a death worm as I was walking, and it was nighttime now, so I needed to be very careful, but I didn't have a sleeping bag. I saw these bull tents right in front of me, however, and I could use them to make exactly that. 
I carefully approached the tents and collected up some gray wool. I also found a chest here which had a poisoning book and a dragon's tooth. I used a recall potion to quickly head home, which actually worked really well, and headed to bed. On day five, I used the dragon tooth, which did something unexpected. What does this do for me? Oh, that summoned a boss. That summoned a boss. Oh, is this a companion? This is my companion, Sparty. Oh, I remember. This is my companion now. Sparty, are you my friend? I think Sparty is my friend. I can't believe it. Yeah, so I had a new friend called Sparty. I made the pan flute, which I mentioned earlier, and when I right-clicked it, it gave me a selection of songs. I jammed out for a bit. Oh! Oh, this is good. Oh! Classic. Woo! I feel enriched. Okay, for purposes of copyright, we're gonna end that there, but that was fun. I made a sleeping bag and then headed out to continue my adventures. I found another tent area in which I looted a chest and then saw this large ravine which had some type of a cave inside. I slowly headed down into the ravine by placing cobblestone steps and Sparty somehow died while I was doing that. I collected up some coal, tin, and iron and made a furnace to smelt everything up. I made an iron pickaxe because I thought I could use one by now, but no, I needed a mining level of 15 and mine was only at 5. I approached the dungeon that I'd seen from above and it had some zombies scattered inside. I slowly made my way down, defeating the zombies from above, and after defeating them all, I looted the chest that was there. It gave me a magic mirror and this can permanently be used to teleport you back to your spawn point. I was really lucky. I also got more buddy card packs and an iron backpack, which was an amazing find because it had so much storage and I was able to to equip it on my back slot, letting me carry it around permanently. I could access it by pressing the N key, so it was really easy to use. I looted some more of these spirit orbs that drop from mobs. I had no idea what they do, so if anybody does, please let me know. I found another chest to the side, which had some amulets in it, which I unfortunately couldn't use yet because my magic level wasn't high enough, and it also had a zombie heart. And on the topic of zombies, there was a zombie brute caged in this dungeon, and it was enchanted, so it was very dangerous. But there was a chest next to it, which I wanted to loot, so I tried to get a good angle on it and was able to slowly take it down. I then looted the chest, which gave me an unholy grail, which said not to drink it. And trust me, I researched this. You do not want to drink it. It can kill you. I also got a cross necklace, which increases how long you're invincible for after you take damage, and I was able to equip it. Finally, something I could equip. I also got some of this muscle milk, which I drank and this stuff makes you powerful. It gives buffs for everything. I started making my way up and almost got assassinated by a creeper, which I fortunately avoided. I continued looking through the cave in search of more dungeons, and this underground biome looked really cool. With all the new loot collected, I decided I would continue adventuring above ground. I found a dead fire dragon, which was pretty good news for me because I was able to get dragon bones from it. I then found an encampment with these guys that have pan flutes, so that was pretty fun. Soon I ran into this little house, and and little did I know that on the inside there were recruits for hire, so I gave them some bread and Rickard Lindbergh joined my team. I stole his helmet and then there was another recruit, Valdemar Danielson, so I added him to the team as well. When I headed outside, I encountered a cyclops, so uh, I absolutely ran the other way. I soon found this kind of mystical looking tree with banners around it, and when I broke the yig yig Drassel, I don't know how to say it, uh, sapling on the inside. I got the legendary discovery achievement, but I didn't get the sapling, so I, I don't know what happened there. I continued running and encountered some bandits, which uh, I, I was not ready for. I found this little temple with golden apples inside, so that was nice. And uh, I saw a new type of bee in the distance. It's a big bee, bumblebee. Look at that. Look at how big that bee is. Oh my goodness. Not aggressive, is it? Look at it. I almost feel like it could be aggressive. I'm curious. I then had the random idea to take damage from a cactus to increase my endurance level because I wanted to use armor better than leather. Now, this actually worked, but I figured that I would take damage from mobs as I would encounter them in the future anyways, so there wasn't a point of just sitting there. I saw another recruit wandering around, which was nice, and I, uh, I borrowed <laughs> his uh, leather tunic, which meant I now had full leather armor. That was the best I could do at my current skill level. I then approached something very dangerous, but I didn't know it yet. I'm wondering what's going on here. Oh, Pixie. Oh, that's a boss. That's a boss. That's a boss. That's dangerous. 
That's dangerous. Oh my goodness. Okay, I panicked and closed my game. I just have to run. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Holy moly. I'm afraid to go near that guy. I'm not gonna do it. I'm out of here. Yeah, that was close. If I hadn't reset my game, I'm not sure if I would have survived. And I don't want to hear about it, okay? This is a strategy that I have to use in these 100 days because there are just some things that will one-shot you otherwise. I found a village soon after that and checked out what was going on. I got a buddy card pack and some food, which was good. Overall, I liked the aesthetic of this village. It looks pretty nice. As I continued adventuring, I saw a pyramid in the distance, so I approached it but things did not go according to plan. Whoa, hold on, look at that. Traps and curses, and a desert temple. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Get me out of there. Oh, what was that? Oh my God, I'm just, I'm dying on the inside. That was, I don't know what that thing was. Oh, I'm freaked out, I'm so freaked out right now. I, uh, I cooled off for a bit and opened up some buddy card packs from which I got a lucky pull. I got a Meltor, which said some folks are about to be roasted. Uh, I was I was definitely stocking up on these cards. I collected some more quest rewards and just look at how big these quest trees are. It's crazy. I got a potion of soul stealing as one of the rewards, which returns health upon damaging others. Before continuing my travels, I decided that I wanted to make a cow and wheat farm so that I could survive more sustainably. I found this interesting green carpenter bee while I was doing that, which scared me for a second because I thought it was going to attack me, but I was good. I went out to collect some wood in preparation of building the farms. I still had to use my stone axe because of how the progression works in this pack. By the end of the day, I had collected 59 acacia logs, and on the next day, I used some of that wood to add storage to my home, then chop down some more trees. After that, I was ready to work on the farm, so I began clearing out the area behind my home. I chopped down any trees in the way and leveled out the ground, which continued into the following day. And with an area fully cleared out, I started placing the fences. I outlined a six by six area for the wheat farm, which I started placing the crops for, but it ended up being too big and the ground ended up dehydrating. So I moved the fencing in by one block. I then placed the chest and torches in the center and my wheat farm was complete. I built a section for the cows as well. And voila, my farms were both complete. After that, I bone mealed the crop to fill the area in a bit more and transported a cow inside the fencing and uh, i don't know if i end up transporting two cows uh well, we'll see. I, I don't think so. <laughs> now, I was sick of only having leather armor, so I was still plotting as to how I would get iron armor. I uh, grabbed sand and cactus out of my chest and started pricking myself again. However, it did start doing a lot of damage to me, and it also wasn't the most entertaining way to play the game. My stats were definitely slowly rising, but they were still pretty beginner level. I collected more quest rewards and got a charm of regeneration, which can give you regeneration when you activate it, and had a durability that I didn't want to use out however, so I equipped it for its bonus attack damage perk for the time being. With all of that done, I was ready to get back to adventuring. I found a beetle, which was kind of cute and kind of disgusting, so I killed it. I, I kind of regretted that and kind of didn't. I made my way through a red desert in which I was very scared of dragons because I was wide in the open. I soon found a shrine, which I got a golden apple and a rabbit's foot from. And after running around for some more time, I found another one that gave me a diamond and a golden apple again, which was pretty good. I then read these signs, which read 400 blocks and 500 blocks to the left. So I followed their direction and I soon found a huge chunk of bone blocks, which was great. I headed over and there were spawners on the inside, which made it a bit dangerous, but I carefully stalked around and it's a good thing I did because the monsters here were not weak. I destroyed all of the spawners and defeated all the mobs and there were blocks of emeralds in the center, which I tried to collect, but unfortunately it was a lost cause with a stone pickaxe. One of the husks I defeated gave me a reward, which I opened up and it gave me an enchantment called Curse of Bones, which basically has a chance to shield you when you're hit. I finally got to collecting the bone 
stone blocks, which I took my sweet time with because these are great. Mining these also gave me dragon teeth, so I was able to spawn a bunch of Sparties. I got just about two stacks of bone blocks, and with that, I was done mining the dragon fossil for the time being. I continued north where I found a mage tower. I also found out that Sparty is on a life timer because all of the ones I spawned started taking damage. I headed inside the mage tower, and when I got to the top, I already knew about the TNT trap under the chest because of a previous 100 days adventure of ours. So I removed it and the chest had an enchantment called Sage's Soul, which improves your wisdom. That was something to do with mage stuff, but it also had an iron helmet with an additional two armor toughness and the possibility for better enchantments. So when I could wear this, I would. I found this dungeon tower towards the end of the day. I made my way to the top where there was a zombie spawner. I took out one zombie that spawned in here and there was nothing else in the room other than an anvil which i picked up i then headed to the middle layer where there was an armor stand so i collected that and replaced my old armor with it after that when i got to the very top of the building there were gold blocks as well as iron blocks and i was able to mine up the iron blocks but not the gold blocks unfortunately with that i left the structure after which i got surprised ah oh! Cyclops. Okay, he's enchanted too, which isn't helping. Okay, I'm going in the water. I made an escape through the water. I ran up to this tent, which turned out to be a part of a village. Inside the tent, there was an oceanographer and a chest with empty maps and dried kelp. Close by, there was another tent that looked very cool. I walked through the banner entrance and there was a chest inside that had some basic loot. After that, I followed my map towards more structures and I found this cemetery, which I've found in the past and I knew that this chest was cursed so i broke it instead of opening it i dug into some of the graves to see if i could find treasure as well but had no luck so i left i found another home with a recruiter inside so i added him to my army shortly after i found this tower which looked unsuspecting on the outside but it ended up having an underground portion i carefully made my way inside and it had a spider spawner which i took out without a problem the chest on the inside had pretty miscellaneous loot but it was actually pretty useful and i got a new leather helmet it had the enchantment insight which increases your experience gain so that would be nice i continued exploring and found these rooms with pressure plates but no traps underneath or anything. I checked out a couple of these rooms, but it was the same thing for each of them, so I moved on. An elite enchanted zombie came at me, but I was able to block it off in time, and my recruit Thomas ended up being an absolute beast. I mean, he shredded down this elite mob. I had a full backpack of loot at this point, so I needed to be careful of what I picked up moving forward. I continued along these strange halls and found this interesting section, which I jumped into and it just had a chest with the same type of loot. I continued down the hall again and found another chest. This time it had much better loot in it, which I gladly swooped up. I equipped the new shield I got and then I came to a new room in which a skeleton took out half my health with one shot, which I luckily survived and blocked myself off from quickly. I defeated the skeleton and looted the chests from which I got an enchanted golden chest plate that had protection three on it and berserker two, which which is an enchantment that increases your damage when you're at lower health. I ended up getting another heart from leveling up my endurance to level 10, which was nice, and then looted another one of these spawner rooms. I then found an area with a lot of chests, but it also left me out in the wide open. I made my way back up and saw that there were hidden emerald blocks, which I still couldn't get. I looted the chests around the area, which definitely didn't come for free as I had to fight through a lot of mobs. I was able to get some pretty decent loot. I decided I would leave that dungeon but unfortunately things only got worse okay we need you to have oh no i was just about to feed him bread no thomas thomas was really powerful oh man Oh, I'm so sad about that one. An honorable companion that we lost. I decided I would head back home. I used the bone blocks I had gotten earlier to bone meal the wheat farm. And I also added a potato in the corner so that I could bone meal it for some quicker food. I cleared out my inventory after that and now wanted to continue my adventure south where I could see two boats on my map. I entered my boat and this happened. Oh, I got a, You are the captain. I have changed my display title to Suevo the captain. S. Suevo the captain. That's what I'm talking about. I carefully boated across the water to an island and slept off the night before approaching a ship on the next day. We got a villager over here. What's going on? Oh, no. Hey, buddy. Wait, is this a friendly ship then? Oh, what are these? I find blue. Okay, so it seems like this is actually completely safe. It's, it's a village, isn't it? Interesting. 
interesting. It turned out to be a ship village. There was even a steering wheel and some basic loot around the area. I went to the top of the ship to see what was there, and it was a beautiful view. I checked out the captain's quarters and lower level section as well. With that, I explored the entirety of the village ship. While adventuring further, though, I found ships that did not look as friendly. Whoa, there are a lot of ships here. That one does not look friendly. That one does not look friendly. That one looks more so friendly, but that does not look friendly. Okay, that is a pillager ship, which is very dangerous, actually. I would prefer not to go there. Let's see what we got on this one. Okay, that's not any easier. Uh, let me check that one, because pillagers I cannot deal with right now. Not with this gear. Okay. This is bad. I'm leaving. That's dangerous. I'm not going to deal with that. Never mind. I'm going back to land. In fact, I'm just going to teleport back home is what I'm going to do. Yeah. My oceanic adventures were cut short because they were very, very dangerous. With adventuring in the sea being so dangerous, I decided I would do the opposite and go underground again because it was fairly rewarding before and maybe I would be able to find better gear. I found this scary Naga looking thing called a Dracaena, which poisoned me, but I was able to take it out. After that, I came up to this webbed cave biome, and as I progressed through, I found this boss dungeon. I didn't have the blocks I needed to block it off. I instantly made a run for it, and fortunately didn't get touched. I ended up mining into a huge lava pool, which was really nice to see. There was a boss room as well that I blocked up. Before fighting the boss, I quickly broke the monster trap that was nearby and after that i fought the boss named cowed who was seemingly in his pjs i was easily able to take hits at him from under the wall and soon enough took him down i picked up the loot and got these ocelot boots with uh, the moon boots enchantment on them which give you the ability to jump higher and fall slower and as you'll see these are crazy well they're better than my current boots oh my goodness <laughs> what what is going on i can fly <laughs> Nice. I love it. I'm loving these moon boots. Oh my goodness. Okay. Iron ring gives me extra armor. I'll equip that. Thank you. Look at this. I'm, I'm, I can fly. I got to doing some mining and these boots were amazing. Unfortunately, what I didn't realize is that when they are in use, they use up durability themselves and uh, they're really easy to break, unfortunately. I encountered a minotaur, which loaded up an attack on me and I got scared. So I took some space for the time being. I returned and while defeating the minotaur, I realized that the blue liquid outlined by netherrack is this mod packs version of the nether portal. This scary thing is once you go in you can't get back unless you find a specific structure i wasn't ready to head in yet so i marked it down and i equipped this chest plate i noticed i got from the boss i defeated which had projectile protection five and a lot of bonus hearts i was up three and a half extra hearts by this point i read more about how the nether works in this pack and then got approached by this little guy that had some interesting traits i decided i would buy a box from him just because i was interested in what it would give me and it gave me junk <laughs> from my readings in the quest book i found out that you can contain nether portal liquid in a bucket and place it wherever you want so i grabbed a couple of buckets of it after that i spent some time mining the ores that would upgrade my mining level by the most because i wanted to increase it so that i could finally use an iron pickaxe unfortunately this is when i found out that the moon boots use up durability on their own what just broke my boots broke. I didn't know they have durability. Oh no. Wow. I did not track that at all. That is extremely unfortunate, but you know what? Probably quite fair because that was very overpowered. My goodness. I finally got my mining level up to 15, meaning I could use an iron pickaxe. I could now mine for a much larger variety of blocks, including sapphire. And this stuff is apparently better than diamond, but it would be a while before I could even use it. I mined up some gold and some diamonds that I had seen earlier. After that, I spent time I'm fighting off mobs to upgrade my combat level. And my sword broke right before I reached level 25, which would allow me to use an iron sword. I was able to hit an enderman with my axe and barely got to level 25 and crafted an iron sword for future use. I headed back home and cleared out my inventory and then went back out to explore the world further. Is that a shipwreck? I don't know if this is a regular shipwreck. This looks a lot different than I remember. Let's see. Dispensers? I wonder if I can 
use that to make anything. Tiki torch. I spent some more time looting the crates and chests in the shipwreck. I got an iron sword with the Bane of Atherpods 4, which was better than my current sword, and got some extra items as well. I made it to shore where I found another one of these shrines. I then ran into this encampment, and on the other side, danger awaited me. Campfire song song. Oh, wow. There are a lot of them. Oh, that's a trapped villager. This isn't a village. Oh my goodness. Okay, I, oh. Okay, doesn't seem to be doing too much damage and I do have an iron sword now. If I'm extra careful, maybe I can loot this. There's a vindicator, those are dangerous. I knew that going down a ground level with those mobs would lead to me dying. So I stayed fighting them from up above. I took a screenshot and decided I would return at a later time when I would be better prepared. When the night approached, however, a blood moon came and it was extremely dangerous to go outside. I figured that I would use this time to get a level 30 enchanting table. So I made 16 bookshelves and then realized I would not be able to get obsidian until I had a diamond pickaxe. And I couldn't use one until my mining level was at level 40. I was at mining level 18. I did, however, realize that my endurance level was high enough to where I could wear iron armor. So I smelted up some iron and also found the special iron helmet that I had gotten before. I equipped my new full set of gear and I was now much more powerful than before. I decided that since I couldn't go outside, I would go and try to upgrade my mining levels so I could get closer to enchanting my gear. I found a big caving system and started looking for ores that increase your mining level by a lot, like randomite ore and lapis. As I was here, I ran into a familiar face, or rather two. Here's a tortoise. If you guys watch my Better Minecraft series, you, you know what this is. This is Garnet. Reborn. Okay, goodbye. Is that a Santa Claus zombie? Okay. Is he carrying a present? Is this good? I, I feel like I shouldn't be killing him. Are you gonna give me something? Oh, he dropped a present. Hold on. Give me that present. It's mine. Oh, I'm so excited to open it. I can't believe this. Okay, present from Santa to anybody. Open on the first. Leather. Good. It's not something bad. I'll take it. After that, I made my way up to a dungeon. It ended up being another one of these zombie rooms, so I was quite confident in approaching it. I got a bunch of buddy card packs, and after defeating the zombie brutes, I found an efficiency for iron pickaxe. I also got this item called the Heart of the Earth that gives you additional level gain and different stats when worn. I checked out what the enchantment called Ifrit's Grace that was on the pickaxe does, and it basically lets you smelt blocks when you power it up with lava. It also had a curse named Famine's Odium that automatically eats food even when you're not hungry, which was a bit annoying, but the efficiency four made it worth it. With that, I headed back out of the dungeon and I continued fighting mobs to upgrade my combat level. I then was doing some more mining when I got a trinket called Piggy. There are trinkets in this mod pack that you can equip, and this one essentially allows you to ride pigs without needing a carrot on the stick. Pigs also move faster when you ride them. I also noticed that from the mobs I had been fighting, I had gotten this ogre power potion that gives you strength three night vision and regeneration these were really powerful and potions are actually really important in this mod pack so they would come in handy after that i saw this strange creature named the forgotten i approached thinking i would be fine and almost got absolutely demolished so i paused the game and then restarting gave me just enough of a buffer time to dodge an arrow and use the magic mirror. Yeah, I barely survived that, and if I would have gotten hit by that arrow, I would be dead, and this challenge would be over. On the next day, I decided that I wanted to return to that encampment that I had run into previously. I had a long ways to travel, so I boated over, careful of sea serpents. While traveling, I saw these giant trees with some type of a fruit growing on them. It was called a baobab tree. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to say it. I, I began towering up to the top and realized that you can do so really fast in this pack. The fruit was literally called Bayobab, and I, I searched it up. Apparently, this is a real thing, and it's a really good fruit for you. It's like a superfood. I'm sorry that I'm butchering the name. I just never heard of it before. I made it to the encampment, but before I could even approach it, I already had pillagers coming at me because there was a hole in the wall. There's not supposed to be a hole there. Okay, the shield should keep me safe. I oh, these guys are the scary ones. Oh, okay. I need to run back. Oh. One more hit. Oh, 
I scouted the encampment to get a sense of what I was up against, and there seemed to be pillagers and crates, but no spawners, which was good news. All I had to do was take out the pillagers one by one, and eventually I would be able to collect my loot. All was going well until a beast came at me. <gasps> it's a ravager. Oh, okay. Oh, how is... It's hitting me through the walls. Okay, this one I can take out with my bow. Oh, there's a guy. Okay, let's see what this bow can do. And so I sat there bowing at the Ravager for a while and was able to take it down. After that, I started shooting the second one down in the distance and I ended up coming closer and I used the same strategy to take it down. I ran out of arrows right when I needed to get one more shot on the Ravager to defeat it. So I had to come closer and fortunately I was able to get it with one melee hit. I got a level up in the Knowledge of Death tree and upgraded the chance that a Voodoo Poppet can trigger. I wasn't sure how to get one myself, but uh, I do get one later. I got back to take taking down enemies of the encampment, and there was a legendary mob that took a lot of hits to take down. Other enemies ended up coming at me as I was trying to take it out, but I was able to get them all into one corner, making it easy for me to put them away. Just as I went down though, I was attacked by an ultimate mob that was even stronger than the one I encountered before. However, I was able to dig underground and make an area where it was easy for me to defeat it. With that, I entered into the inside of the encampment again, and it looked mostly clear. This one's almost dead. Got him. Okay, there's this one over here. Ooh, that's pretty dangerous. <gasps> okay. <sighs> wow. Yeah, they do a lot of damage. Okay. Got him. That might be the entire encampment taken out here. We can free our villagers. Come on out, fellas. You're free. You're free. Yes. I went around and started looting the barrels. As I was doing that, though, I randomly started getting attacked by a raid leader. I was able to drag him out of the water and take him out, but what's unfortunate is that the encampment counted as a village and a raid started. So now I had a limited amount of time to loot everything before I would get attacked. I got an interesting artifact called the Architect's Inkwell, which basically lets you write any lore you want and put it on items. I also found this Scarf of Invisibility, which as you'll see later in combination with something else is very, very strong. The pillagers now started coming after me and I had to quicken my pace in looting everything. I got a looting two sword, which was nice. And with that, I headed back home to sleep off the night. I tried using the architect's inkwell on the following day. I essentially had to put in a lore fragment. Using this, I could write out a description and uh, I, I wrote out quite the story. I decided I would just put it on a book because I didn't want to lose the description. And uh, using another lore fragment, I was able to change the name of the book as well. I decided the next thing I would do is go to the nether. I tried repairing my chest plate beforehand, thinking it was made out of gold, but unfortunately, it was its own armor type. I grabbed a life-saving potion that I had, which gives Gives you absorption 25 and regeneration 15 on use so that would help keep me safe i tried placing the nether portal liquid but it turned out that you can only place it underground so i headed down the ladder and placed it in my mine shaft area and with that i headed into the nether i spawned in a three by three blocks so i began by mining out i found land very quickly and i was in a new quartz themed biome using the feature in this mod pack that lets you place blocks underneath you i was able to get down pretty easily Right away, I found a piglin spawner and they weren't aggressive, so it was safe to enter. I took a look at the loot inside and got some generally useful stuff. I continued on with my adventure and ran into a piglin, which reminded me of the fact that I should have brought golden armor with me, but it was too late for that given that I couldn't return home unless I'd find a monolith and my magic mirror did not work. I made my way into a new biome called the Crimson Gardens. I ran into a magma cube that I happily fought for magma cream in case I needed to make fire resistance potions. I also explored more of the Scythian Torrid's biome, very misty and a bit off-putting. I ran into these basalt giants who I knew were friendly creatures from past adventures. I fought off a minotaur and got the luck coin trinket, which provides you with permanent luck too. So I equipped it. I then saw this little guy who is just just a funny guy. I then ran through a warped desert where everything was warped. <laughs> warped cactus, warped beetles, warped everything. I found another spawner dungeon, which I looted. And then just as I started to think that I was doing well in the nether, this happened. Let me help you out, piglin. Oh, I'm afraid of hitting the piglin by accident. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Okay. <sighs> One heart. 
I have no idea what just happened there. That was way too close. I noticed that I got an item called a familiar stone, which lets you bring back your latest dead pet, which is really nice. And I wish I had this during the better Minecraft series. I recognized my overpowered chest plate was just about broken. Luckily, I had a protection two chainmail one to replace it. As I was wandering around, I found these mushrooms called hope mushrooms, which are a part of the good night's sleep mod and can be used to craft a strange bed. I looked into this further and found out that this bed can lead to a dream or a nightmare biome and all I needed was to find a despair mushroom which I did right away. I collected more of my quest rewards and while doing that I found out that the coins I had been collecting could be used in a coin shop to get randomized rewards so I would return to use that later. After some more adventuring I came to find a structure with some gold on it. When I approached it it turned out to be a monolith with two gold blocks and a reclaimer so I just needed two more gold and blocks to activate it. I was able to make one more block of gold with the ingots in my backpack, so I just needed a little bit more gold to get back home. I figured it wouldn't be hard to find some golden nuggets in the nether. While searching, I ran into another elite embody, like the one I uh, almost got one-shotted by last time. This time, I was able to fend it off with ease, and it dropped on monster coin, one of the best coins that can be used in the quest book shop. I decided that I would pick up the reclaimer and golden blocks so that when I did find gold, I could just build it from my start point. I found another monolith which gave me the golden blocks I needed and I found out that the reclaimer makes you float so I needed to be careful with that. I returned to my starting coordinates and built out the monolith. At first I did it in the wrong pattern but as soon as I fixed it the monolith was activated and now had a yellowy green beam. It teleported me to a random nether portal but fortunately I had the magic mirror so I was easily able to make it back home. I spent some time wood cutting on the next day just because I needed to keep my wood supply fresh to craft chests and other materials. After that, I expanded and reorganized my storage system a little bit because it was a mess. Then I checked what I could buy with my coins. Using a monster coin, I was able to level up a talent of my choosing, and I decided to upgrade my endurance. From copper coins, you get really basic loot, like I got an emerald nugget. I decided I would get back to adventuring, so I repaired my gear and was ready to get back to it. I wanted to go to the dream and nightmare dimensions, so I crafted a strange bed and took the gamble by sleeping on it okay oop shameful plans oh i got the nightmare i did not get the dream realm uh oh look at that we got some nether mobs we got some zombie over there creeper huh oh okay these plants hurt good to know necrom ore what is this block of necrom it's like the iron of this dimension i guess i have never seen this biome before or this realm these are interesting trees there's a structure over that way oh that's just a normal structure though that might be a regular structure too blood logs interesting here's some black mushroom which is not typical despair mushroom block mm Hmm. red mushroom planks huh that's just another mod coming in oh illager miner okay it's an illager tower tormentor Ooh. I decided I would approach the tower I saw in the distance, and it was not filled with friendly beings. There was a lot of mining-related loot here, which made sense, and I made sure to take all of it because I knew I would potentially need it in the future. There were a lot of pickaxes here, which was really nice because I could combine them to make a very good pickaxe in the future. Making my way through the mobs and looting seemed to be no problem, but things got scary when I got approached by an elite mob who I was fortunately able to combo and take down. I was starting to load up on loot and decided I would go down to the next layer of the dungeon. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. No, no. Okay. Oof. Okay. I boxed myself in. <laughs> okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Look at this guy in his minecart. Get out of here. Wow. Okay, that uh, you're not supposed to fall in. You're not supposed to fall in. <sighs> okay, are there more here? Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. I finished off the miners from my comfortable position. The loot on this layer was getting better than before. I got diamonds, iron, and gold. I ended up getting an achievement for looting a hundred containers and got this trophy. Whoa, centennial trophy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Steve opening a chest.
Amazing. Oh, wow. That just... Look at that. Mm, that is amazing. I finished up looting and got all the TNT as well, which I wasn't sure what I was going to use it for, but you never know what you need to be prepared for. I went down to the final layer, and there was a mob called a Furentor here, which I had never seen before. It went invisible, but I was able to take it down. I took down the final pillager, and with that, got an achievement for defeating 50 raiders. I finished up looting the barrels at the bottom, and then headed back up to to the surface i explored the dimension a bit more and while doing so this happened Ooh. what is going on it's a jukebox creeper ha! oh he's fast oh my god ah! Ah! stop 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 what is he doing this creeper is crazy this creeper has a jukebox and he's chasing me oh this is the mo this is the, the craziest thing i've ever seen it's a teenager creeper blasting music I got him. He didn't drop the backpack. <sighs> that was incredible. That was the best thing to have ever happened to me in this mod pack. I headed underground for my remaining time in the nightmare, and it mostly seemed to be the same as in the overworld. Just as I was mining some necrom ore, I ended up getting teleported back to the overworld because the nightmare timer had run out. I decided I wanted to explore some more, so I right-clicked the bed again, and this time got into the dream dimension. I found a hope mushroom right away, which looked very interesting. Overall, this biome was very vibrant. I found unicorns, which were really cute creatures. I found some lollipop bushes, got rainbow seeds, which I'm not sure what those grow. In the distance, I saw a pink tree biome, which I approached, and it was candy trees. While swimming through water, I found some sponges, which it's nice to know that you can find sponges here. I decided I'd mine down, and the underground here is much more interesting than it was in the nightmare biome. I found rainbow ore, which can be used to make an assortment of things, including a pot of gold and rainbow gear that looked really cool. I then mined into a cave, and uh, something really interesting was awaiting me. Here's a cave. Oh, baby creeper? No. Oh, look at his little... Look at his little diapers. Oh, there are so many baby creepers. No, this is not a dream. Look at it. Oh, oh. Look at that baby creeper. Look at them. They're all in their PJs. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This might be my favorite dimension. Yeah, these baby creepers were wild and not something I expected to find in the dream dimension. I found this candy ore and it could be used to eat or craft into hard candy, which can then be used to create gear. I mined up some more and then just explored more of the dimension. I ended up finding an assortment of sheep all differently colored, which was really aesthetically pleasing. And soon enough, the dream timer ran out and I got teleported back home. I now wanted to go to a new dimension called the Undergarden. And for that, I needed to make an item called called a catalyst. It was a really easy thing to make, and then all I had to do was build out a portal frame with some stone bricks and light it up. Okay, what do we got going on here? Perfect. Look at this, the under garden. Whoa, purple liquid coming down. Holy moly, what are these? Ditch bulb. You can make palm torches with them. Depth rock pebble. Slingshot ammo. Whoa, deep excavation. Uh-huh, interesting. Clog room. What happens if I walk through this? Oh, that poisons you. Blood mushroom. Gloom gourd pie. Seed pouch. Spinach mushroom cliche. Spore arrow. What is that? Rot walker. You need to be careful of it because it's enchanted. Rotling. This looks more plausible. Oh. Whoa, it runs forward at you. Okay. Grongol log. Interesting. That's an interesting wood type. It's pure green. Whoa. Rot walker. Got him. Etheric shard. Shard torch. Nugget. Ingot. Whoa, look at that. Wow, this is really cool. Oh, dweller, are you mean? You're nice. Aw. Now, you don't look cute at all, but you're nice, which is cool. Wow, this looks crazy. I'm almost too afraid to jump down. I don't know if that's solid water. It would appear it is. By all logical metrics. Jumping down should be okay. Gwib. Oh, that doesn't look friendly. Oh, that is not friendly. Get away from me, Gwib. Got him. Very peculiar. Glitter kelp. Cool. Got cyan trees over that way. Would you look at that? Rotwalker. Ooh. Nargoyle. 
These are not nice right now. There are a lot of these. Oh, it's tracking me. Look at it go. Sploogy. Oh my goodness. These mobs are insane. Oh my goodness. Muncher. These mobs are crazy. Rot beast. That doesn't look nice. Ink mushroom. There's a chest. Mimic. Oh, is that a fake chest? Oh, look at it. Look at this thing. I knew it. Too good to be true. Digging claws. Ooh. I found these blister berries and droop fruit, which seem to have a lot of saturation. I also found out that if you touch a droop fruit vine, you go flying upwards. I fought another rot walker, and unfortunately, it broke my helmet because I lost track of my gear. I decided I should get home, and while I was traveling back, I saw this mob called the Stoneborn get defeated. I got to my portal and teleported home, and with that, my undergarden adventure was done for now. I decided I would go adventuring underground so I could get my mining level points higher for a diamond pickaxe and also find gear. While mining down, I got a trinket called lunch bag that has a chance to give you extra saturation, but I kept my luck coin. As soon as I got to a cave, I found another mob with a jukebox backpack and had to take it down. And I continued fighting mobs, looting dungeons and mining for a while. And I came up to a boss room, but I couldn't find the boss. So I looted the chests inside. I got a balloon, which lets you jump higher and take less fall damage. I also got a heart of the golem relic and gauntlets of dexterity. The heart of the golem was hard to read, but it basically gives you four additional armor. And if you have no armor on, it gives you 16 armor on on its own. I tested this out, but me having armor on gave me more armor in total, and I still kept the relic on for the four additional armor. The gauntlets of dexterity just let you switch items without having to wait for the attack cooldown, which is really nice. I did some more mining and also found another boss room, which I quickly blocked off. I was easily able to take out Mother Inanzom, the Duminator. I got a longbow from her, as well as a really nice helmet that had bonus hearts and a lot of durability. The shield seemed nice as well, but unfortunately it only had seven durability, so it would be hard to use. And then I was exploring more of the cave when I realized that I had bat poop in my inventory. Yeah, bat poop, that's a, that, that's a thing. I continued the same adventuring into the next couple of days and got a lot of materials as well as skill points. I ran out of food by the beginning of day 31, so I returned home, and because of the skill leveling I had done, I could now use my magma walkers, which would allow me to walk on lava. I also collected up all of the coins I had gotten from adventuring, which was 23 copper coins, three silver, five gold, and three monster coins. First, I bought some dungeon gear, but it didn't come with any stats or perks or anything, so that was quite strange. Other than that, I just got a bunch of random rewards, some of which I could choose between. I got this Aquanaut helmet from a loot crate, which gives you the conduit effect while you wear it, so that was nice. Other than that, I didn't get anything that special. I also spammed copper coins and got a bunch of random loot. On the next day, I grew myself some carrots, so that I could turn them into golden ones for food. I then opened up a bunch of buddy card packs I had, and it turned out that I got the full set. This gave me the base set buddy metal, and that gave me permanent speed one. I wanted to go adventuring again, but this time above ground, so I boated across the sea and encountered a ruined nether portal, which I looted, and it had a piece of obsidian, which was nice, but I still needed three more for an enchanting table. I ran into a shipwreck and took a look around. It had some decent loot, but nothing amazing, so I headed back out. I ended up finding a house in a mushroom island. I went inside the house, and it gave me the achievement fishing in the dark. And on the inside, there wasn't a fisherman, there was a fish man. I took him out, and other than the loot in the barrels, there didn't seem to be anything else here, so I headed out. The mushroom island looked beautiful, and I approached this interesting withered tree that I saw. I saw a harpy from a long distance, and they are aggressive mobs, so I decided to test my aim out on it. I actually leveled my archery by a good amount doing this. I went up to the nest to loot it, and I got a magic feather, which turns out can be used to make winged sandals, and 
these give you 2.5 times speed as well as jump boost 5 which seemed pretty crazy you can also make a bag of wind with it but i wasn't exactly sure what it did that was it for my adventure in the mushroom biome for now so i headed back out to sea i saw a sea serpent while leaving but fortunately it didn't attack me for some reason honestly much better than i remember them being in rl craft i spotted a snow village that i made my way to the villagers here were called nitwits which was pretty funny and instead of being iron golems there were clay golems protecting the village i ran further and almost ran directly into an ice dragon i quickly backed out from there as i continued my travels i made my way through a large snowy forest biome with a big ravine in the middle of it i then ran up to these four trees that were all different colors and were next to each other it looked uh, really magical i saw a house in the snow which seemed very comforting given the circumstances and when i entered it had a fireplace and was cozy but didn't have much else to offer it did have a portal frame for the everbright dimension but i've been there in my better minecraft series so i figured i would continue on journeying i was honestly kind of surprised with how scarce finding structures was i wasn't really being overwhelmed like i thought i'd be i did however find this Ooh, gigante gig gigante what is going on over there <laughs> it's a giant I kind of feel bad, but he has a red bar over him, so he'd probably try to attack me if I came closer. And I'm not risking that. Okay. Oh, I got a head. Gigante head. Oh, nice. Look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some people say I have a big head. I can kind of understand what they mean. I made my way inside a tower that was close by and carefully looted its chest. I got to the top and there was a bell as well as a block of redstone powering a lamp. There didn't seem to be much else up here, so I headed back out and found this abandoned looking house just nearby. I built up to it and went inside. This is where the doom is made. Find the workshops of doom. Oh my goodness. What does that mean? Workshop of doom? What is going on in here? Workshop of doom. Okay, I'm going down the workshop of doom. Um, I don't trust these doors. I gotta tell ya. Ah! Holy moly! Jeez! That really scared me. Oh my goodness, I had a mini heart attack there. After having a mini heart attack, I continued on to looting the area, and the place was strange, filled with miscellaneous loot. I ended up accidentally mining on the outside of the strange structure and found another section with barrels in it. I then ran into this room, and it just had a bunch of blocks of coal, so I happily mined that up. That netted me 19 blocks of coal in total. I then found this room that had a minecart with a chest and a railway around it. I broke it off since it kind of sketched me out a little, and then looted it. It was some basic wars, however. I ran into a room that had a bunch of mobs inside, so I set up a trap and defeated each of them. But just when I thought it was clear, a vindicator jumped at me and chunked my health down substantially. I was still able to land the final hits, however, and stayed safe. The final room that I ran into was this treasure room. I made sure the chests weren't trapped and first looted the items and the item frames. I got boots with rabbit's feet three, which make you jump higher and fall faster and make you immune to fall damage. The these made me move crazy fast. The chests had some decent loot themselves, but nothing special. I exited the workshop of doom and these new boots were insane. However, I unfortunately found out that just like the moon boots, these run out of durability on their own. I decided I would store them away and use them if I could find mending or something later on. I went underground again because I still needed to get my mining level high enough to where I could mine obsidian. I found this little tidbit of a leafy kind of cave, which I found interesting. Other other than that, I just dealt with the usual process of fighting mobs and mining ores. While doing so, I got a trinket called the Spider, which lets you climb walls. I found another small dungeon and got the music disc Strad from it, which is just a song that I love. After that, I ran into the snowy mine shaft and further down it had a minecart chest with a spider necklace, which lets you climb walls and move through cobwebs. So I equipped it in place of my invisibility necklace since it had more utility. I also found another heart of the earth and an infinity ham relic, which is a great artifact that can basically be used as infinite food. I found a wall in the mine shaft leading to another dungeon, which I entered. There was a flood of zombies in the area, but given I had reached iron gear, I had mostly no difficulties cleaning them up. While fighting off a skeleton, 
I found this statue called the Straw Effigy that I decided I would pick up on my way out. I made my way through the dungeon, lighting it up and breaking all the spawners, and then went back through looting all the chests that I had seen. I got this leather belt relic, which is actually really powerful because it lets you wear three additional talisman relics, which are usually very strong on their own. I collected the Straw Effigy, or effigy, I don't know, statue that I had seen earlier, and then ran into this skeleton head with powder around it, which looked like a ritual of some kind. I looted the chest that was in the library and got a slime heart relic, which reduces your health regeneration, but also makes you bounce when you fall on the ground instead of taking damage. I couldn't wear it yet because I needed to upgrade my magic level. I found this strange contraption where I could move a carved pumpkin with a piston and it didn't really do anything. My gear was starting to break, so I headed home, and and after repairing my gear, I continued leveling my mining level from days 37 to day 39. On day 38, I found this relic called the Spatial Sign in a mine shaft, which worked in a pretty strange way. It essentially lets you set a teleportation point and then gives you 30 seconds before it teleports you back to it. It also has a perk that teleports you to your last saved spot upon fatal damage and breaks instead of you dying. But it was unclear as to if it would only work while I had the teleportation active Activated, and I didn't want to risk it. I continued on with mining and also ended up finding one of those dark angels that I'd been seeing underground. I almost died. It did so much damage to me. I was barely able to take it out. While looting another dungeon, I found a cobalt shield, which is really nice because it makes you immune to knockback. And by the end of day 39, I finally reached mining level 40, which meant that I could finally use a diamond pickaxe. I already had diamonds on me, so I quickly crafted one up and mined up a bunch of pieces of obsidian in case I would need it for anything else. With 20 pieces of obsidian collected, I cleared out my inventory at home and finally crafted an enchanting table. I placed the complete level 30 enchanting table out in an open space and I was ready to begin enchanting. On the next day, I enchanted all of my gear. I unfortunately couldn't enchant my helmet, but after that, when I turned to look at my home, an unfamiliar stranger awaited me. What is that plague, doctor? Oh my god. God, that is really scary. Rat skull, old triacle. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Why are you at my door? Rat upgrade combiner, what? Um, I don't want your rat stuff. I don't want it. Don't get out of here. Nasty. That was very strange to say the least. I made a grindstone so that I could try for better enchants on my gear. I got a diamond sword with outlaw three that makes you deal more damage to villagers. Got streakers will four, which makes you break the armor of others. But in good news, I got a great enchantment for a chest plate and boots. For the diamond sword, I settled on the enchants focus impact three, ifrit's blessing five, and death's odium. Focus impact three makes you deal more damage the slower your attack speed. And as you'll see later, this is actually Actually really really good. I got a power four bow and an efficiency three pickaxe as well. When I returned to my door, I noticed that the plague doctor had a pet rat, but you know what? I didn't want to kill it because they weren't hurting me in any way. However, things didn't go exactly to plan when I accidentally let the rat into my house. It, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm completely, I'm completely fine. Unfortunately, it and it ended up dying on its own. Now I was running out of space and storage in my house, so I decided I wanted to build a new one. Lucky for me, the mod that gave me the starter house also has a medium house that you can craft. I just needed some basic home supplies, so I got to collecting them. I crafted a few furnaces, compressed stone, and crafting tables. I had to go out and search for wool so I could make beds, and found this house along the way. I got a bed, which was good, and it had some random loot inside as well. I went to the top of the attic, and here I found an iron glaive weapon, which looked interesting, so I decided I would try using it for a bit. I eventually found the same tent area I'd been to before and sheared up a good chunk of wool. Upon returning home, I made the beds I needed, and after crafting a couple more things, I crafted myself a moderate house. There were a lot of design options I could choose from. The design I found to be most unique was the nether house, so I placed it down. Here's our new home. Look at that. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Just got built real quick. 
We do have some storage. We have a farm here, but we'll probably convert this into something else. And we go even lower here to have probably just a mining area, which is nice. Nether sweet nether. Mm -hmm, I agree. Okay, cool. And so I had a new house with more storage. I decided I would use moving in as a chance to organize my store. So I filled the new house with tons of chests and I slowly transported important goods over. This process ended up taking me until the end of day 46, uh, also because I ended up accidentally leaving leaving my game on for a bit too long after the blood moon. And on day 47, the next thing I wanted to do is defeat the wither. Before that, however, I wanted to make sure my gear was good enough. I teleported far out and my followers ended up returning to me because I was close enough to them now. I found a mine shaft underground and I defeated another one of these zombie Santas, which gave me 11 golden ingots. I looted more typical chests and dungeons until I ran into this unique dungeon I had never seen before. I made my way inside and was faced with a horde of skeletons right away. My companions and I were able to do a good job of cleaning them out. However, one of my companions unfortunately died during combat. I started looting the barrels and they were filled to the brim with good loot, enchanted gear, ores, and relics. I had to be very careful when fighting the skeletons here because one shot from them could prove to be fatal. I decided I would run through more of the dungeon before looting anything, breaking the spawners and lighting it up. As I began to loot the barrels, I found out just how crazy the loot on the inside was. There was even enchanted diamond gear here. It's honestly hard to describe how many items I got. I mean, I was getting so much enchanted armor, tools, and ores. My last companion unfortunately got taken out, but I wasn't too upset over the loss because I knew that's just how the combat went at this point. I avenged my companion and continued adventuring through the mining system. I got a protection two diamond helmet and ended up getting these vampiric gloves. These make your attacks heal you and are a very powerful relic. During my exploration of this dungeon, I decided I would start using more potions and scrolls because I was getting a lot of them. And this was a really good decision because it makes clearing mobs out very easy, as you'll see. I looted more barrels that I had cleared the path for, and the gear just got better and better. I got these boots with magic protection and vitae, which is an enchantment that increases your health. I got this bow with focus fire and iron leggings with fire protection and unbreaking. I also got tons more ores and a lot of pumpkin pie. Using my new ogre potion that gives strength three, I was able to one shot every mob. This was so overpowered. I mean, I was literally three shotting enchanted enemies that would have taken me forever to defeat before. I got a diamond chest plate and a superstitious hat relic, which gives you an additional level of looting permanently. I also got this shock pendant, which gives you a chance to strike mobs with lighting, which could be a pretty good option, although I would be afraid of the lightning hitting me. I got a chest plate with vitae four, which is basically health increase four, and I found the cloud in a bottle relic, which is really powerful as you'll see soon. This dungeon was extremely big, and I kept adventuring into the next day. I got this chest plate with protection four, golem soul four, which I thought was really good, but it turns out that the golem soul enchant makes you move really slowly in exchange for no knockback. Nonetheless, I did not want to use it. I got an iron helmet with projectile protection five, and iron leggings with projectile protection five, and unbreaking. I then ended up getting attacked by a forgotten one who blinds you as he attacks you, but I was able to take him out this time. Unfortunately, my boots broke along the way, uh, so I had to replace my gear with the new stuff I'd gotten on this trip, including a chest piece with flaming rebuke three that sets enemies on fire and knocks them back when they attack you. I found a pickaxe with the Midas blessing enchantment, which is really cool because it essentially consumes gold and in return lets you double any ores when mining. The flaming rebuke enchantment enchantment on my chest piece actually came very much in handy. I was able to fend off mobs while staying much safer. I then looted a present I had gotten from a zombie Santa, and I got a star, which was uh, really cute. I continued finding loot, including the obsidian skull relic, which gives you temporary immunity to fire damage. And by day 49, I was finally done looting this dungeon. It literally took me a total of three days. That's how big it was. And look at the amount of loot I got. It was just insane. Just to top things off, I got a protection three unbreaking three chest plate which i couldn't use yet and an undead army also ended up defeated likely to the sun which was uh, above ground while i was in the dungeon so i got an achievement and a reward baggie i finally left the dungeon and proceeded to find another dungeon boss that i took out he dropped a highly enchanted crossbow that i unfortunately couldn't use yet and some cloth leggings which looked strong at first with protection five but they were definitely on the weaker side i later found this very 
very cool underground section filled with arid rock, which I had never seen before. And I found another boss named Drew that I was also able to take out with ease. He dropped these very powerful ancient leggings that had a lot of armor, health boost, and lifesteal aura. The issue with them is that they had a very low durability. On that topic though, I found a mending book so I would be able to fix that problem. I continued traveling with my double jump and I was pretty fast with it. I found a zombie dungeon and adventured through it, but it turned out that there was another structure connected to it. I spy. Follow the eye vendor. I found an end stronghold without even trying to find an end stronghold. What a good day. Oh my goodness. I ran around in search of the portal itself. In this mod pack, the stronghold is much larger and there were a lot of rooms to explore. While looting, I accidentally set my respawn point so I couldn't magic mirror back home anymore, but that was okay because I wasn't too far from home. As I progressed through, I found a library which had some pretty decent enchanted books and eventually I managed to find the portal. With that, I took a screenshot and headed back for home. While on the way, I approached this huge pyramid and broke into its maze inside. I got a few golden apples from a chest and then found this mini desert temple that I made sure to de-trapify. The chest on the inside offered some pretty basic loot and after looting I headed back out. I got home and I opened the undead army loot bag I got and it gave me a few enchanted books as well as this tattered cloth which can be used to create armor that is essentially just leather with a purple tint. I spent time unloading the insane amount of loot that I had gotten. I also became a a lot more powerful on this day because I could finally equip my ghost skin talisman which makes projectiles fly through you and my scarab talisman which significantly increases your movement speed in the desert. I needed to repair my leather belt relic though which allows you to equip three talismans but I got really lucky and was able to enchant it with unbreaking three on the first try so that was great. I put mending on my leggings because I knew that they could break at any moment and I also combined two iron boots I had to stack their enchantments with each other. And I gotta tell you, it was crazy because I could now triple jump. For some reason, I decided I would adventure underground again. And, and let me tell you, nothing good came out of this. I looted a chest and got this enchanted voodoo poppet that has a 60% chance to trigger the prevention of death by darkness, which is really vague, but as you'll see later, ends up being a life saving. This was a good chance to test out my ghost skin talisman, however, and it worked like a charm. Skeletons could not land a single shot on me no matter what. It seemed the game was now listening to my objective of defeating a wither because I found a nether dungeon. Now everything was going fine at first. I defeated some enchanted zombies, even an elite one with ease, but then this happened. Oh. The puppet saved me from death. Oh my God. Wow. I don't know how I took so much damage. I have like almost 20 hearts and I lost them almost all in one hit. That is insane. Wow. That was terrible. Me losing my hearts didn't matter anymore. What did matter was that the voodoo poppet unexpectedly saved me from the wither damage. This was honestly incredibly lucky. And if I hadn't picked up the cursed item, I would not have survived. Finally, on the next day, I decided I would get the wither skulls I needed. I finally swapped out my iron sword with a diamond sword, got my six ogre power potions and life saving potions, and with that, I headed into the nether. And just as I did, I got completely ambushed by a legendary enchanted minotaur. I was able to get away and then took it out so it wouldn't stay there. I even ended up heading back home because I wanted to grab torches so I could light the spawn area up and prevent any more mobs from spawning there. When I got back home though I realized that the minotaur broke my leggings even though I had mending on them which was very unfortunate. I combined leggings to make a pair that had protection for unbreaking three. I also wanted to put speed aura on them but it turned out that the enchantment can't be applied to regular leggings. I headed into the nether once more this time with the intent to stay and finish my objective. Traveling in the nether with double jump was very very overpowered to say the least and while I was out here on my trip I figured I would mine some nether cords to increase my levels and thereby let me get better gear. However, I managed to break my pickaxe while doing that like the smarty pants I am. So I headed home and I had an efficiency four iron pickaxe in my chest from the mining system dungeons I had looted. I headed back into the nether right away and made sure to light it up because I'd forgotten to do that before. I ended up completely using out my iron pickaxe, but I returned home and enchanted an efficiency four diamond pickaxe, which was nice. Anyways, I went to the nether and mined some quartz along the way again. I don't, I don't know what was up to me. 
me. But this time, I made it to another fortress. Finally. All of the work I had put in was paying off because blazes couldn't even hit me with my ghost skin talisman. I could triple jump all over the place and I began fighting off the wither skeletons where it didn't take me long to get my first skull. I also looted chests on the inside and got these withered tomes, which were like the ancient tomes I'd gotten before. They increased my magic skill level. The demon angel thing called an impusa that I had trouble with before now had no power over me and I was able to take her out easily. I continued hunting wither skeletons into the next day. I also found more loot, including this reflection necklace that accumulates charges and then absorbs damage while returning 50% of it to attackers. I kept fighting the wither skeletons into day 58, but other than the one wither skull I found, I still had no luck. I decided I would try another approach to getting wither heads, which could work, which was adventuring in the nether, since this mod pack introduced a lot of new structures and mobs. I shortly found another temple, which looked safe and innocent at first, but it is in fact trapped, so I removed all of that. The chest didn't have anything great except for this highly enchanted stone sword, which I was tempted to start using, but I figured my diamond sword would still be better. Right next to the temple, I found a bastion remnant. Um, I think that's what you call it. I'm sorry, I don't remember. I play way too much mod in Minecraft. Anyways, I stole some gold and the piglins did not like that. I also quickly looted some chests and got the bastion ring relic, and I then got away from there. This relic lets piglins show you where bastions are and also makes them friendly to you. I got away from there and soon found a spawner out in the open. This chest gave me a lucky horseshoe, which completely removes fall damage, and this was a really nice perk. I got attacked by a piglin brood after that who broke my boots, unfortunately, and this meant I lost my double jump. I was at least able to get protection three on my boots and helmets. I also wanted to combine two chest plates to create an insanely enchanted piece, but it was just way too expensive, so I was good with what I had for the time being. I headed back into the nether and continued my search for wither skulls. I found that in the glowstone canyon biome, there were a lot of monoliths. It must be some glitch with how they spawn in the code or something, but there were just a crazy amount of them here. I mined up a handful of monoliths that I saw, and there were so many more. I mean, they were literally spawning one inside another. A legendary wither skeleton attacked me, but all of its shots just went right through me, so I was able to chunk it down after a while. And I ran into a wolf mob called an Orthus, which I thought would be friendly, but it started coming at me, so I had to take it down. It dropped its head, which looked pretty cool, but didn't seem to have any use past being a trophy. After running for a while longer, I found this. Ooh, what is this? Look at this big tower. Whoa. Are these like saw bricks? Blocks? Oh, they push you off. Okay. We've got blazes that are armored. Oh my goodness. Reinforced blaze, huh? Whoa. Whoa. Blaze armor scrap. Oh, it's an altar for a boss, but I don't have the key for it. As I got to the edge of the tower, I found a chest with random loot inside, as well as a spawner, which I broke right away on autopilot, but then I realized that it may have been a wither skeleton spawner. Sure enough, as I ran around and made it to another corner, I found that the spawner was for incomplete withers. I waited for it to spawn one, and as soon as it did, I defeated the incomplete wither, and it dropped a wither skull. In fact, as it turns out, these mobs are guaranteed to drop wither skulls. I kept the coordinates to this place because if I ever needed wither skulls, I knew exactly where to go. I cleared out a few more reinforced blazes on my way out and got back home. I enchanted and repaired my gear and then headed into the nether to quickly find some soul sand because I didn't have any. I wasn't finding any for a very long time and ended up running into this warped enderman and two of them started coming at me. They looked scary, but I I took him out and it dropped a warped ender pearl. By the end of day 62, I didn't find soul sand, but I did find soul soil, which was good enough, and I took it back home. The morning of day 63, I went out to find a wild and hunter waiting to pounce on me. I was able to strafe and take it out manageably though. Ready to fight the wither, I began building it out in the desert where my speed was increased, ate an enchanted golden apple, drank an ogre power potion, and began the fight. Let's go for it. Okay, let's go. Now, if I can just get melee hits in, I can use the strength three, which is very powerful. And the projectiles are just flying right through me for the most part, which is so strong. Gonna get ya. Oh man, my strength three is so overpowered. Oh, what is it doing? Oh, what just happened? Okay. And I got it. Okay, that was very smooth sailing. Potions that I have are very strong. Ooh, an undead army is approaching. 
Oh, undead army. Okay. I fought off the undead army and they dropped a lot of pieces of jewelry that gave different buffs. I went underground, which is where the rest of the first wave spawned and defeated them all. I fought off the second wave and this was mostly very easy because of my strength three and lifesteal. I cleared out the second wave quick enough and then the third wave approached. These mobs were much more enchanted than the previous waves. It felt like the husks were really big for some reason. I got three jump boost rings, one haste and one strength from defeating them, which was just way too many rings. I was able to finish up clearing the final undead army wave and with that i received my undead army treasure bag it gave me a bunch of emeralds and bandages as well as a golden apple which was decent i then headed into the nether to mine some quartz because i needed to enchant another pickaxe i ended up finishing enchanting a diamond pickaxe with efficiency and started working towards my objective my new objective was to head into some new dimensional dungeons which is an amazing mod that randomly generates dungeons and has secret chests to collect inside i crafted a blank portal key and then headed to an end portal to right click a frame which is how you activate the key i ended up getting the key to the monument of bravery also i fixed the portal which required a two by one area and pillars on the sides and before doing the dungeon i wanted to repair my relics using a runic anvil because relics lose their durability in this mod pack and i wouldn't want them to give out at a bad time i headed into the nether because i needed to find basalt and blackstone i ran through some nether biomes that you guys have probably seen before in my previous adventures. I was able to find a basalt deltas biome eventually and collected some of that up. After that, I ran a bit further and was able to find myself some blackstone. I also randomly found a dungeon spawn in the middle of the nether. I headed in and the loot on the inside was fairly decent. I got an efficiency three book, but the loot definitely didn't come for free because there were some mobs scattered throughout. After looting the full dungeon, I headed back for home. And with my newly collected resources, I created the runic anvil. I also also needed to make a runic hammer which was easier to make and with that i was able to repair all of my relics now i had gotten this enchanted tablet of cupidity which said it would take me somewhere upon use where that was i did not know i ended up getting teleported to a dungeon and i had no health I used an enchanted golden apple quickly in case of anything, and I found out that I lost health because I was turned into a pig. Yeah, this was not a good tablet to use. As soon as a tablet turned against me, I teleported back home and realized that I should never trust random items like that again. Upon returning to my normal form, I decided I would teleport to the dimensional dungeon I activated with the key we got earlier. I spawned in, and I was met with a maze-like room. I slowly cleared my way through zombies and progressed further. The first main room that I encountered was this non-textured room with randomly activating blocks. It seemed that stepping on the pressure plates again didn't reactivate them, and the pathway through the room was mostly preset, you just had to find it. I was eventually able to make it through and saw these buttons on the floor, which I <laughs> impulsively activated. Sure enough, it activated TNT and I ran away quickly. The wall blew open and when I approached, there were monsters on the inside that I took out. One of them was holding a portal key which was nice and it was called the key to the nether fortress of fortune the chest on the inside just had a bunch of stained glass and then i found another chest which had a regular loot table because these dungeon chests can spawn with loot tables from any mod i ran into an aquatic room which had a mob with another key which i took out and then cleared out the rest of the mobs the chest on the inside seemed to be from a mine shaft so i just carried on i found a room with red carpet and as i was discovering that i got Got attacked by a legendary drowned. It was dealing a lot of damage, so I backed off and drank a life saving potion just in case of anything. It somehow disappeared, so I carried on and opened a closet up which had a chest on the inside with an infinity book. I then ran into this room with dispensers that I activated and it just spawned a lot of mushrooms. The other one spawned only cows, and I actually missed a chest in this room because they are hidden all around, and I only learned that as I did more of these dungeons. The next room I saw was this lava bordered cage with a chest and an iron door in front of it. I had no clue how to get in, so I left it alone for the time being. And right next to this was a room with iron doors, and I was hesitant to go in because I thought it might be a trap. Nevertheless, I went in and instantly pressed the buttons, which 
probably wasn't the best idea. Pillager spawned, which I took out, and then I actually read the book that was there. It explained that you press the middle button to spawn multiple pillagers and either of the sides to only spawn one. I spent a bit more time fighting them because they dropped a lot of jewelry with buffs that could be useful. And anyways, there were buttons that let me leave afterwards, and I went back to the lava room. I realized that when you break an iron cage, it leaves a gap open, so using this trick, I could loot the chest, and on the inside, I got the matter manipulator trophy. I'm not sure if this is actually how you're supposed to get this chest, but I got it anyways. I further ran and found this sponge filled room. There were pressure plates with dispensers underneath that shot out arrows, but because of my relic, I didn't get hit by them. I saw a button which I pressed and it activated the lamps, therefore melting the ice slowly. A bunch of doors opened up after that and there was one with water that allowed you to get back up. I didn't realize that's what it was for though because I had jump boost so I didn't even need to use it. I left the room because the ice was still melting and ran past a little lava parkour room. I made it to this abandoned moss filled room and I used the button that was there which dispensed out a book that stated some rooms have treasure chests that only appear if you are lucky. So I guess that was something that was good to know. I then found this room which had a dimensional dungeon portal and it gave me a green key named the key to the vast sanctuary. After that, I found this room, which had a bunch of trap doors and pressure plates in it. It was pretty unclear as to what was happening in this room. I just knew I could activate note blocks by stepping on the pressure plates. The next room I ran into was this room, and it looked very dangerous as it had redstone torches, tripwire hooks, skulls, and lava all around. This was a red flag if there ever was one. I activated a piston anyways, and I clearly touched the wrong one because it instantly released lava all throughout the room and I had to run out of there. I debated using an enchanted golden apple to gain fire resistance and loot the other chest, but my better judgment decided against it, so I, I left the room alone. I returned to the sponge room and the ice was finally melted, so I looted the crate on the inside and got a portal crown block, which actually ends up being a pretty important block. I found this dimensional doors room, which seemed to be more of a homage to the mod rather than an actual loot room, and I then found this B room, which I couldn't really find anything inside. If any of you are pros as to how Dimensional Dungeons works, please let me know and I'd be curious to know about some more of the secret chests. I then walked into this lava filled room and getting the chest inside was mostly no issue because of my magma walker boots. The loot was very typical and with that I was done looting this Dimensional Dungeon and headed back for home. And next I picked out my key to the Nether Fortress of Fortune and put it in to head in for another adventure. I was faced with Wither Skulls on armor stands off the start, which I couldn't break, and I progressed through the dungeon and fought the mobs I encountered, which were fairly typical. I opened a chest which seemed to be a library loot table, as I got an enchanted book and scrolls. Using my jump boost, I was able to go under the bridge as well, and there was a chest that gave me a really good diamond pickaxe with efficiency 3 reinforced 3. I got back up using my jump boost and wall climbed over, and then approached a witch room, one of which I knocked into fire. I cleared out another witch that was here and then got the Butcher's Cleaver Trinket, which gives animals a chance to drop bones. I looted all the crates here, and one of them had a lingering potion of luck, which I used, and I never really understood how the luck effect works. It would actually be great if one of you could help explain it to me. I found a room with a lone chest that had a projectile protection 4 book in it, which I picked up, and there was this room with a bunch of golden pressure plates and picture frames, which I wasn't sure if it was a puzzle or was just for aesthetics. I also found this soul sand cover room with pressure plates, which I wasn't sure what to do with. I tried activating all of them, but they didn't really seem to do anything. Another room had a chest full of concrete in it, and as I progressed, I pressed a button that lowered the gravel around it and unveiled two chests. There were also mobs on the inside that I easily took out. I looted the chests, one gave me a portal key and the other an infinity book. Now I continued doing these dimensional dungeons from day 68 to day 75, but the thing is that they were a lot like gambling. They were very fun and addictive, but they didn't really have that much reward and lost me more than I gained by doing them. There were definitely some interesting parts, but rather than boring you guys with a bunch of footage of me running through the same rooms over and over, I think we'll skip this part over. So getting back to it on day 75, after I was done gambling away with the dimensional dungeons, my next objective was to defeat the ender dragon. I needed ender pearls, so I started searching underground 
around. I defeated another boss and he dropped some uncommon gear, which was decent. I then found another magic mirror in a mine shaft, which was a different type, but it actually ended up being a better version because it lets you instantly teleport. While it was nighttime, I tried to find Enderman out in the open. I especially traveled in the desert given the fact that I could easily run really fast because of my scarab talisman. I eventually found one Enderman that I took out, but he didn't drop any ender pearls. While searching, I found one of these pillager towers that I'd seen before and I approached it. I went over the wall and got to the middle and inside there was a black iron golem guarding it. It was really hard to get melee hits on it because it would knock me back. So I took out my bow and took it out. It turned out that the obsidian on the inside was a cover for a vault. The chests were mostly filled with basic loot, however, and I even found out that there was a second layer, but it was all the same loot. I ran down and there was a bottom layer to this build as well. There were a few mobs on the inside, including an evoker, which was the first one I'd encountered this whole hundred days, and he dropped me a totem of undying, which was a great find. I took all the rest of the mobs out and checked out the chest, but again, it was just very basic loot, so I moved on. I ran out and found this structure that gave me the achievement Catabasis, saying that I found the Scorched Mines. I drank up my potions in preparation and then dropped my chest plate by accident while equipping my Totem of Undying, which I was confused about at first, but then I looked around and was able to find it lying on the ground. I quickly returned home because I noticed I needed to repair all of my gear and then headed back to the entrance. With that, I jumped down and I went to break a spawner when I was instantly attacked with fire and wither. As I was running from the center, I checked a barrel, which seemed to have some fairly normal gear. As I advanced, however, I ran into a lot of mobs. There were a bunch of masked skeletons that I had to take out one by one. One of the mobs that I defeated dropped me a scroll of strength, which I decided it was a good time to use given there were so many mobs around, and it gave me strength five, which was really powerful. As I went down some stairs, I was met with a bunch of enchanted mobs, but I was able to back up and block them off in time. That let me defeat them all from above. Right as I defeated them all, however, my gear broke, which was completely unexpected given that I had just fixed it. So I once again returned home and got myself a fresh set of gear. I got back to the dungeon by the end of the day, which I uh, definitely happily jumped into. And with that, I continued my adventuring, breaking spawners and looting barrels. I finished exploring the whole dungeon soon enough and broke out into a cave system nearby to hunt for more endermen or dungeons that hopefully had ender pearls. I defeated a boss named Yolanda the Mean along the way who dropped some very nice leggings with a lot of armor on them and five bonus maxed health, which was very strong. I then found a zombie villager's home that had a barrel in it with some pretty nice loot. After that, I looted a simple dungeon that gave me a crazy item named the Enchanted Scroll of Reach. I activated it and also got the Lost Page of Erdos, which I used and it gave me eight full levels. I then tested out my new Reach and it was crazy. Oh, look at that range. Holy moly. Look at this range enchantment. This is crazy. What? I can mine anything from anywhere. Look at that. Oh. Can I hit that from here? My goodness. Look how far away I can hit things from. I think it's so far that it's registering it as a ranged weapon. It, I don't know what's going on. That's really overpowered though. I found this enchantment in a dungeon called Ares Blessing, which makes it so lethal damage causes durability damage instead. I finally found a second enderman that I defeated and again, had no luck with getting an ender pearl. I went up to the surface to move out further and try to find new caving systems. And just as I did that, a sea serpent came up and attacked me. This thing must have been tracking me while I was underground because these are not supposed to be on the land. But using my reach, I was able to take it out. I picked up its scales and headed out. Once I found a spot that was further away, I went back underground, and while underground, I fought a bunch of mobs off, one of which dropped an energy boost scroll. This energy boost ended up being insane. Like, I mean, crazy. I went up to the surface to test just how crazy it was, and I was literally flying all over the place. Like, I was moving at a speed to where I thought the game would crash. I found a little tower along the way, and this huge building, which I was familiar with since it does look incredible, but I knew there wouldn't be any crazy loot or ender pearls inside. I continued further and found a mage tower. It contained a helmet, which was fairly basic, but with some enchantments, it could be great. 
great. I encountered Frost Maw, which you all might have seen in some previous adventures, but I was able to defeat it pretty much before it even spawned. The game definitely started struggling with my speed soon enough, but I continued venturing forward, finding an ice pyramid. The inside did not have ender pearls, unfortunately, so I headed out right away. Even travel in the water was incredibly fast. And while feeling invincible, I was tempted to start melee attacking a Cyclops, but as soon as it started trying to eat me, I backed off. It was not worth it because these things can one-shot you. I found another tower and looked to the top of it where there were some iron blocks and gold blocks. I found this inconspicuous looking house and struggled to get in because of how fast I was. It ended up just being another one of uh, the kind of igloo towers where there's a compartment with a villager zombie down below. I went underground again on the next day and I found a new style of dungeon. I progressed through and found more of the usual loot. I can continued, however, and started finding ender pearls, which was a miracle. It had felt like such a long process trying to get them. Now I was at least seeing that it was possible. I turned off my shaders while down here for a bit because I was lagging a bit. Don't worry, I end up turning them back on later, but for the time being, this made the game really smooth for me. I found another enderman down here, but it didn't drop anything, so I continued looting more and more chests. I ran into a boss named Din Van Pig here, who I defeated, and he dropped a very nice chest plate I actually. The only thing was that it had an enchantment called Reckless, which reduces your health at the benefit of more damage. Now, it only reduces your health by 60%. I decided I wouldn't use it, but when I was moving it into my backpack, some glitch happened, and I just died. Well, not not really, because you see, I pressed spectate world and I was fine, and my totem of undying wasn't even used. You guys cannot get mad at me because of that. That did not even count as a death. My character was, however, to the side, so I reset my game, and upon rejoining, I was fine and everything was fixed. Underneath the dungeon I had been exploring, I found out that there was another themed dungeon. I headed inside, and as I fought through a group of mobs, I unlocked the ghost trinket. This trinket makes it so that if you have invisibility, no mobs can see you even if you have gear on. That is until you attack them. Now, I didn't have my invisibility scarf in my backpack, but as soon as I would get home, I would equip it. I ventured through to find more ender pearls in the chests, but while the chests down here were good, none of them had any. I went back up to the dungeon I was venturing through before and found a zombie maze connected to it. It seemed the ender pearls dried out from this area, so I magic mirrored back home. I equipped my scarf of invisibility visibility, and now I was literally fully invisible. I crafted the ender pearls I had into Eyes of Ender, and then I went out with practically no armor and purposely got hit by bandits because I was just about at endurance level 45, meaning I would be able to wear diamond gear. I got dangerously low, but the plan did work, and I got to endurance 45. I equipped my diamond helmet and created some more powerful pieces of diamond gear. I tried putting the speed aura of four enchantment on my diamond leggings, but it appears that you cannot put the enchantment on diamond gear. I had some special cloth leggings from a boss I defeated that already had speed aura one on them, so I tried to put it on there and I was able to apply the enchantment. This made me very fast on normal ground and especially fast in the desert. I ran into a boss while running to the ender portal and it did not see me until I hit it, so the invisibility definitely worked. Not only that, but its arrows were just going right through me. I was legitimately like a ghost. It dropped some pretty good leggings that I decided to use instead of my diamond leggings, and then I got to the ender portal and placed my nine eyes of ender. I just needed three more. There were some jail cells in the stronghold that I checked out. Other than being creepy though, they didn't seem to offer much. I found this little vault room as well that had a small amount of materials, and I went back home by the end of the day. I enchanted a new diamond sword, and at first I thought I got something pretty good, but it turned out that the curse on it called Ifrit's judgment made it so that if you hit an enemy more than four times, it sets you on fire. Less than that, and it gave you rewards, but I just didn't want to keep getting set on fire. I continued looking for Enderman in the night and found this boss called Urther the Lame, who dropped his cutlass and I tested it out. I entered the pyramid I had entered before once again and instantly found a double chest which I looted, but it just had bones, possibly from a previous adventurer. I went to the top of the pyramid where 
I actually found a chest with the notch apple, which would become very handy. I headed underground to hopefully find the remaining ender pearls I needed and looted a mineshaft chest, which gave me the midnight robe relic, which gives you bonus speed in the night and invisibility in areas with no light. I then ventured through another one of these skeleton dungeons I had been to before, and none of the skeletons could see me because of my invisibility relic. In the night, I ended up finding just how strong the cutlass can be. I found out I could just spam hits at a crazy speed, and it was pretty fun just to play around with this for a bit. I felt very overpowered. On day 83, I defeated a boss that gave me an ancient chest plate with crazy traits, so I most definitely put it on. I was so annoyed of trying to find ender pearls that I just started running around with max FOV on. Fortunately, I found one of these dungeons in which I had found ender pearls before, and looting here, I found this sp spore sack talisman that gives you a 30% chance of poisoning mobs around you, and I put it on since I had an empty talisman slot. After a while of looting, I was able to find the last three ender pearls I needed. With that, I headed into the end, and I spawned in a pretty bad spot, so I had to build over to the main island. I then broke my way up, and when I came up to the surface, I was pleasantly surprised by these little friendly enderlings, which I thought were really cute. Anyways, enough with the distractions, it was time to fight off the ender dragon. I slowly took out all of the ender crystals, and from there, it was just time to take shots at the ender dragon. I ended up accidentally using the magic mirror midway, which caused all of my levels to be removed, but this was just a glitch because when I got back to the end, I got my levels back. When I returned, it turned out that the ender dragon was still healing, so I had to build up and take out the last ender crystal, and then I got back to taking shots at the ender dragon. After a while, I was able to take it out. I got a message saying that impending doom approaches as the game switched to master mode, making everything more difficult. I also got the title, The Liberator. I collected the experience all around and got to level 84. I got an ender dragon difficulty bag and opened it to receive an end crystal, which was a very nice reward. I built over to an end gate next and entered it to begin adventuring in the end. I missed a bit of recording, but I found a end temple that I detrapped and looted the chest, which had a bunch of ender pearls and eyes of ender, and also some other very cool loot. This included new endors, astral dust, which can be used to create an astral breaker, which is a crazy looking hammer that can be used to break a larger area of blocks. There was also a new set of buddy card packs and some very cool relics. That included the elytra booster, which makes your elytra faster if you're in the end or if you have dragon's breath. And there was also this chorus inhibitor that makes it so when you eat chorus fruit, you teleport in the direction you are facing up to 50 blocks uh, in a random range. I then found this space dissector, which is essentially an end boomerang that can bounce off walls to deal damage, but it can also be used to teleport, which was really nice. The teleportation with the space dissector was very good, but I did want to try out the chorus inhibitor as well, so I collected up some chorus fruit. I tested out the inhibitor, and sure enough, it worked pretty well. The only thing was that the length of the teleportation was completely random, so sometimes it would get me far, and sometimes I wouldn't get that far at all. I decided I would mainly stick to using the dissector. I went for a risky teleportation and was able to get very far. On this island, I found an end city with a cool looking spaceship. The first thing I did is teleport up to it. I dug inside and found a control center, which I tested to see if it uh, actually did something, but it didn't really seem like it. As I progressed through, I saw more and more control panels, which looked pretty cool. I dug through to a new section and found a chest here, which was a pretty stack. I got a bunch of thalassium ingots, music discs, and the soul devourer relic, which absorbs souls of defeated mobs and increases your damage by 0.1% permanently for each soul you collect. This was insanely strong and I made sure to equip it. I found some boots with interesting enchantments on them. There was Cloud Walker, which can make you temporarily not fall down and I think walk in the air, and Shadow Glide, which increases your movement speed in low light areas. I broke and looked around the rest of the ship, but there wasn't anything else to find. So I headed out and went to teleport to the city itself. I went inside one of the top buildings and inside there was a chest that had 
even more crazy loot in it. I found the Eye of the Nebula, which unused teleports you behind a creature you look at and also gives you magic damage resistance as well as a 15% chance to teleport away from any attack. This was really interesting, but I couldn't use it and I probably wouldn't even if I had these skill points. I also found a Shadow Glaive, which was similar to the Dissector just without the teleportation aspect. I then found a Helium Flamingo, which lets you swim in the air for a limited amount of time, which I unfortunately couldn't test out because my flying level wasn't high enough. I also found this very cool mending mixture that can be combined with any piece of gear to fully restore it. These actually aren't even that hard to make, which was good to know. As I explored more of the end city, I fell to the bottom and found a kind of gardening chest. I also ended up finding this purper golem who I was able to take out fairly easily. However, it did do some serious damage to my armor. I soon was finished with looting the end city and continued my exploration when I found this blue structure. I broke in and right away, I dropped into a room that just had wither skulls lying around. I collected all three skulls up and continued looking around the structure and I found a spawner and a chest. The chest had a bunch of enchanted books, most of which had new enchantments on them. I broke into another room right beside this and uh, this one had a bunch of good stuff, including dragon armor. I continued searching through the rooms and found a ladder going down to the next level where I got attacked by these Himalites, which were fairly easy to defeat and dropped floral paste, which could be used to make these Himmel blocks. I continued looting the rooms here and it was fun because there were a bunch of new ore I went down another layer and another one and cleared out some more Himalites. I kind of felt bad doing so, but they were the ones attacking me. I looted the rest of this layer and with that, headed out. My adventures didn't stop there though, because soon enough, I found this tower with an Enderman head embedded on the wall. I headed inside where I found some chorus fruit growing and I went up the stairs and here I found a loot shulker, which I got an achievement from because this is a per player loot container, meaning everyone who would open this would have different loot. I got a bunch of interesting enchanted items here and progressed to the next layer where I had to break through some blocks to move upward. As I went higher, I found another loot shulker which had some pretty good loot on the inside. With that looted, I headed back out. I found a little ender bee while out here which was pretty cute and I then tried to transport myself with the space dissector as usual but I fully missed that and my ender pearl. I was stuck in midair so I paused to think. I then realized that I should be able to use my magic mirror now that I've defeated the ender dragon. Sure enough, I used it in time and was able to get back home. That was extremely close and I needed to recover from that. I had gotten a lot of loot from my trip, so I spent a while organizing it neatly into my chests. After that, I decided I wanted to do some more dimensional dungeons. I was hooked on this stuff. So to give you the highlights on what I did, I first activated a few keys and ran a few dungeons. I got a power five book from one of the chests here and I also got a second portal crown block and dragon breath potions. The portal crowns were important because now that they were attached to the portal, in addition to two flags, I would be able to do tier two dungeons with the green keys. The tier two dungeons were definitely different. They were a lot larger and were definitely more dangerous. I was now getting good at finding hidden chests and got some pretty good stuff, including an efficiency five fortune three book. And remember how I mentioned that tier two rooms were more dangerous? They definitely are because it trapped me in a room and just started exploding TNT. I ended up having to wait it out until I could finally leave the room. By the end of day 91, I finished doing these dungeons and sorted everything I got into my storage system. As I was looking through the quest book, I found a section called specializations, which I hadn't seen before. I looked for the class system at the start, but couldn't find it. And this is exactly what allows you to choose one. I decided I would choose the thieves class because it was very similar to a rogue. I got a bunch of items, but I didn't stop at tier one. I had 97 levels and decided that I would fully upgrade myself. I had to submit 16 blocks of gold for tier 3, which I definitely had from all of my adventures, so I scrapped up all of the gold that I had already smelted, and with that got myself the tier 3 Mark of the Rogue. I collected up everything that I had gotten and got a bunch of potions that I stored in my backpack. I also stored my legendary armor that I had gotten, and I got some artifacts from this as well, including a ghost cloak, which lets you gain ghost form temporarily which lets you move through mobs as well as absorb damage, a totem of shielding, which makes a bubble that protects you from projectiles, and the light feather, which lets you do a little tumble. I equipped the artifacts and tested them out. The totem of shielding was pretty cool. The light feather gave me
me uh, just a small jump effect, and I didn't see the effect from the cloak because mobs weren't nearby. With some time left, I decided that I would fight some bosses, the first being Swamp Jaw. I crafted its spawn item using spider eyes, bones, and rotten flesh. I spawned the boss, and it looked very interesting. However, it seemed to be a pretty easy fight. Swamp Jaw was dropping explosives at me, but I was able to dodge them and continue shooting him with my bow. Soon enough, after hitting multiple shots on him, I was able to take him out. I collected my rewards, one of which was mossy teeth, which could be used to make some interesting items. These included a music disc, a caged heart relic that reduces damage exceeding one-fourth of your health, bone raker that just gives you bonus attack damage, a depth star which can shoot a shockwave, and a marshy delight which gives you a lot of saturation. The next boss I wanted to summon was the Dame Fortune. Its spawn egg is crafted with netherrack, gold, and a diamond. I decided I would spawn it in the desert for more speed, and the fight began. This boss mostly only used projectiles, and I couldn't get hit by them. I still decided I would dodge some just to get more into the fight, but I was in good hands already. The Dame Fortuna did have a lot of health, and it wasn't a fast process getting it down. It did have an evoker type of attack, which clawed at me, so I had to be careful, but as I strafed around, I was able to deal substantial chunks of damage at its health. And with a consistent strategy of attacking and moving, I was able to defeat it. I got an item from it called Fortune's Favor, which could be used to make an Ace of Iron, which sometimes negates attacks and is affected by luck, the Slicer's Dice, which makes your attacks deal more damage, also affected by luck, and a very cool sword named Cocktail Cutlass, which sometimes grants you random potion effects. There is also the Velvet Fortune food, which I'm guessing can give you random effects as well. I was enjoying fighting off all these bosses, and the next one I wanted to fight was the Haunted Bell. I needed gold and soul sand for its spawn egg, which I did not have, so I had to head into the nether to once again search for soul sand. I found this interesting little glowstone structure while I was journeying out, and I finally found soul sand by the end of the day. I collected it up and was now able to use the magic mirror in the nether since defeating the ender dragon, and with that I crafted the haunted bell's spawn egg and spawned the boss in. This fight had a similar feel to the dame fortuna fight, so I stuck to strafing and firing arrows. This boss was definitely a lot more tricky because it would hang back and then approach me, go side to side, and that just tripped me out a lot. It even activated this kind of whirlpool effect of blocks, but none of them could hit me fortunately. With one final shot, I was able to take down the haunted bell and at the same time receive the blaze heart trinket, which can make you immune to fire damage, so that was pretty nice. The phantoplasm dropped from this boss lets you craft a passages toll, which is an item that can teleport you 16 blocks through a surface, which is pretty wild actually. You can also make either glazed cupcakes, a specter's eye, which can reveal nearby enemies, and Spectre's Grasp, which increases your reach distance by two, which could actually be really, really good. With all of those bosses done, I saw a little quest signifying a zombie gate pearl. Curious, I crafted this and threw it down. This gateway had waves, which I took out with a fair amount of ease, so I progressed through a lot of waves, and with the defeat of the final zombie, a bunch of rotten flesh sprouted out, and my rewards were available in the quest book. One of these was a small skeleton gate pearls, so I took everything out and also observed myself in F5 as I remained completely invisible. If this was an online server, I would be crazy overpowered. Now with all of my problems settled and the world conquered, I was looking through my quest book when I saw the Tropic Craft dimension. This would be a perfect way for me to go on a vacation and get some much needed rest, so I set out to get there. Now the process is not very vacation-like. I needed to make a pina colada, which required a bamboo mug, pineapple cubes, and coconut chunks. So I needed to find bamboo, pineapple, and coconut. Right next to me were palm trees with coconuts, so I grabbed those up. Now, I wasn't sure exactly how I could turn the coconuts into coconut chunks at first. I tried breaking down the palm tree, but that didn't work. And I found out that you're just supposed to break a coconut with a sword, and boom, I had coconut chunks. Next, I needed to find pineapple. The only problem was that I didn't know where. I tried searching on the shore, but had no luck, so I continued searching. I ended up finding a jungle on the map, and I needed bamboo, so I headed over there. I found bamboo right away, which I collected right up, and I ran right past a pineapple. 
Yep. Instead of taking that, I found a jungle temple, which I headed towards, and it was definitely different from the typical Minecraft jungle temple. I dug down and was attacked by silverfish as I did so. I still continued digging down, however, and dug down to the area with chests. I checked for traps, but it appeared that there weren't any, so I looted the chests, and the loot was mostly basic, but it did have the holy locket relic, which deals additional damage to undead enemies. I was fortunately successful in getting my eye on more pineapples after that and picked them up. I broke one of them with a sword which gave me pineapple cubes and I now had everything I needed to craft a pina colada. I returned home, brewed one up, and also realized that I needed more bamboo to craft a vacation chair. So I headed back into the jungle, collected up the needed bamboo, and crafted a chair. With that I went outside to drink my pina colada as the sun set. Can I drink my pina colada? Oh, bam. Oh my goodness, look. It's like a tiki head, chunko head. Di block of diamond. Oh, there's lava there. That one burned, but I got one. Chunko head, that's fun. Oops. Okay, well, I got some of that. Now I'm burning half to death, but that's fine. Easter Island head. It doesn't see me. Oh, it, does it doesn't take damage. It doesn't take damage. What in the world? Okay. We got trees with orange. Grapefruit. Orange. There's a volcano. Let's see what's at the top over here. Okay. There's a Tropa Bee. That's funny. Hello, Tropa Bee. Oh my god, Tropa Bee. This is the coolest bee I've ever seen. Look at him. Go, Tropa Bee. Oh my goodness! Is there anything in this volcano? Doesn't seem like there is. It's just a volcano. Whee! What are these? Reindeer. Oh, I can ride it. It's iris. Beautiful flower. Spider monkey. Oh my goodness. Hello. Do you like grapefruit, spider monkey? What about orange? We got white lipped peccary. Hello. Jaguar. Papaya. Thank you. Oh, these boots have pestilence odium, so they do damage to passive mobs nearby. Look at that. That's a cool tree right there. That is huge. Whoa. Okay. Let's see if there's anything inside this tree. There's something of the above. Hello. What is this? Bamboo chest. Bamboo? Nigel's mustache. Nice. I need to stop being invisible for a second. Hold on. Nice. Look at that mustache. I'm looking so cool. Oh, yeah. Coffee beans. Mmm, coffee. Roasted coffee bean. I headed back home by the next day and got the level glitch again, but don't worry, I still had all of my levels. Now, there was another dimension that I wanted to adventure into, which was called the Bumble Zone. I could get into this dimension by enderpearling into a beehive, which was actually pretty fun. So I searched and I ended up getting into the dimension, but I accidentally missed recording the part where I purled into a hive. So I went back and did it again, just as confirmation. Ooh. Okay. The Bumble Zone, Hive Wall, Sugar Water Floor. Whoa, interesting. Okay. Honey. I found out that the honey blocks around the area could store honey within them, which was cool. Some of the blocks I broke gave me honeycombs, in fact. As I went up the mountain, I approached a huge, huge bee world. I also ran through the pollinated fields biome, which slowed me down by a lot. I mined the stuff up, and it gave me pollen puff, which could be turned into bee bread. I also found what looked to be very white water. So I scooped a bucket of it, and it turned out to be sugar water. I progressed further through the dimension and collected any new blocks that I saw. There were different ores of the comb blocks, and I found some gold combs. I even found diamond comb blocks, but I couldn't tell if these comb blocks had separate uses from one another or not. I explored through more of the dimension and found redstone comb blocks, as well as these honey crystal shards. I mined a few more varieties of comb blocks, and then was in a hive cave when my curse on my gear did damage to a nearby bee. This caused me to receive the wrath of hive effect which set all of the bees around me against me so i had to be very careful and fight them off i found this behemoth which was actually pretty scary but i defeated it in one hit this was a cool dimension and it was fun exploring there were a bunch of different varieties of bees flying around some of which were aggressive and with the basics of the dimension mostly explored I headed home. As I was looking through the quest book, I found out that there was a lot you could do with the pet dog in this mod pack, and I felt alone in this world, so I figured finding a companion 
would be the perfect thing to do. I made it to a snowy biome and started my search. Along the way, I found this interesting little ruined building that had a chest with a paraglider inside it. This was fun to play around with for a bit, but I did find that the glide was on the pretty slow side and you have to be careful when using this. Day 99 was here and I still hadn't found a wolf, so I was starting to get into a bit of a panic now. I found some dryads in a snowy forest, which was cool, but still no luck with the wolf. I got sidetracked by a tower towards the end of the day. It was an abandoned castle structure and there were some chests on the inside that were pretty beginner level. I made it up to the attic of one of the towers, but still nothing special, so I got out and continued my search. Day 100 now approached, but still nothing at all. I was starting to get worried that I would finish off this adventure alone after all. I found some seals, which uh, made me feel a bit better, including this baby seal. But towards the end of day 100, I got an idea. I heard a cow moving, thinking that it was a wolf, but this made me think into the fact that entities show up as dots on the minimap. Now, I couldn't be certain as to what those entities were, but soon enough, if I'd follow them, I'd be able to find some wolves. And sure enough, I did. Oh, oh, wolves, wolves. Yes. I only need the one. Oh, yes. Okay, please come with me. Will the wolf teleport? Please tell me that he'll teleport. Teleport, teleport, please. No. No, 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 no. My wolf isn't teleporting to me. My wolf wasn't on set. Okay, I'm gonna teleport. I had lost my wolf seconds after taming it, but I wasn't gonna give up on it. I approached the waystone and teleported as close as I could to where I had been. I made my way towards my wolf, and as I did, I ran into some pegasus. Now, it was very tempting for me to forget about my wolf and to try to tame a pegasus at this point instead because of how cool they were. But you know what? I had my pet and I was sticking by it. <gasps> yes! Hello! Hello! Now what we needed to do is get to the nearest waystone as fast as possible. Along the way, the wolf took six damage, but I didn't have any raw meat to heal it, so we had to keep going. To make things worse, we had to run past two giants who could just eat my wolf if I made one wrong step. As the morning of day 101 approached, I needed to get our wolf into a boat to teleport together using a waystone. We made it to the next waystone, and I bolted it for home. With that, I grabbed a name tag, named it Buddy, and I quickly grabbed purple dye for the leash. And boom, we had our dog, Buddy. We're done. We did it. That was a crazy, crazy adventure. I'll see you all in the next adventure.